There has been such an incredible human investment um, in this place over such a long period of time, and it has nothing to do with money. And, I, and so it reminds me of a quote by Emerson, which is that money often costs too much. And this looks like one of those situations where, um, for all the wrong reasons, money seems to be the issue, and that's not what's at issue here. This is far more valuable than anything like that. No, pretty sad. Mm -hmm. Pretty sad about this place closing. 16 years. Mm -hmm. I never figured this would happen. Oh, I think there's a huge amount of public support for Kenderdine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this can be witnessed by the group of artists that are here today, coming up on their, just on their own volition, mm -hmm. taking part in, they're used to coming here, and they miss this place. And they just, they just had to come back. So there they are, out on the beach, painting. trying to maintain the style of life that they're used to. <coughs> so, you know, I think that speaks for itself right there. Yeah, we used to have the carpenters, and the woodworkers here, and fiddlers. None of that anymore. They're all gone south and other places. Yeah, it was nice. Like, when I first started here, I figured that was the best place in the world. This was my dream job. This was going to be my, when I retire, I was going to continue working at Kenderdine until I couldn't work anymore, you know, and caught me off guard. Hopefully they'll reopen and I can maintain. This is the best environment I've ever worked in. People are great, the clientele is great, the location is great. I never even knew about Fairy Island, the sanctuary, until I, I'd seen it on a map, never been there. When I, my first year here, found out what that was all about. And asked local people. They didn't know what I was talking about. So there's a history in this place that I wished everybody knew about, you know. Be ashamed to lose any part of this place. When the high schools are out, there were lots of young people come in here and learn how to play the fiddle. I remember one time there was a little boy, four years old, and he could play fiddle better than some of the grown-ups. And there was an old, old girl that was here. She was in her 90s and she was learning how to play guitar. You know, you don't see that no more. Pretty sad. I've heard it said that there's more people in New York know about Kenderdine campus than people in Saskatchewan know about Kenderdine campus and its history and what it's done for the province. Ever since its inception, it's been a mainstay in the artist community. So keep the public aware, keep the pressure on local, you know, the university, politicians, whoever. Just. Keep letting the people know that this place exists. Maybe they could, uh, oh, I don't know, some kind of public information walk through, you know, school groups. I think what it is here is more freedom. <laughs> you know, when they're here, you're your own boss. You come and go, eat when you want, well, not, you have to come in for breakfast at a certain time and dinner and supper, but after that, you can have build a fire on the beach and have a few wieners, and mm -hmm. a few brown bottles you usually drink. <laughs> <laughs> rethink, please rethink the decision and look at it from a point of view, a humanistic point of view, and what this does for the people, not the economy or whatever. It's already done its fair share mm -hmm. to help the economy historically. and. If it's a break-even operation, that should be good enough. The ongoing, like if an artist is here and spends five days here, does say three or four paintings a day, 15 to 20 paintings when they here, and each one is worth $500, gets sold locally in Saskatchewan, 
that's benefiting a large part of Saskatchewan. Multiply that by several hundred artists, woodworkers, the uh, sculptors, you know, it does a lot for the economy. Welders. Not just the university's mm -hmm. budget, but the whole provincial economy. And you get more done by creating wealth through the artistry than you do by mining for gold or drilling for oil or whatever. That's my personal take on that situation. When it comes there, if they don't, it'll be gone. Yeah. I guess there's a connection here to the history of art in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. Most well-known Saskatchewan artists have been involved with this camp in some way or another since it started. And so there's that connection. And then there's the connection with the university, which I'm actually a grad from. And, um, and the boreal forest. The boreal forest is beautiful. And having access like this to the boreal forest is marvelous, not just the forest itself, but the fact that there's paths so that you can get through it without damaging anything. Um, I think there's been a lot of consciousness about ecological footprints up here. Um, over on the island, um, it's marvelous over there. There's muskeg, there's, you know, there's again, there's paths for humans, but there isn't that sort of intrusion that you get at the rest of Emma Lake, which is full of motorboats. Mm -hmm. I believe that the university has an obligation to offer service to the people of Saskatchewan in terms of education, and that's not just in the degree programs. Um, and uh, this, is, this is a marvelous spot, and here is an opportunity for experiential learning in all sorts of areas, not just art. But I'd like to see it, I'd like to see it utilized more, and there's certainly, uh, we've been up here and we've shared space, studio space with quilt makers, with biologists, with um, people making jewelry with the singer-songwriters. One year there was um, a, a class with grandparents and their children. And, you know, there's and the photographers who you never see because they get up at four in the morning <laughs> and come home and sleep all day. So there, there's lots of opportunity for, for multi-uses of this space. I remember that summer, I was, I'm sure it was 1972, but... Um, they uh, had fired up this fireplace in the center of the dining hall, yeah. beautiful. And we had all gathered here um, for a fish fry because um, a native Indian man, this beautiful, beautiful old man with, a, I'll never forget his face, had agreed to come and tell us stories of his culture yeah. that night at a fish fry around this center part of the dining hall. Yeah. It was a fabulous night. It was really made you feel the spirit of the, uh, the past in a way we yeah. had never before. So they used, the, Emma Lake uh, as a facility, this campus, was pivotal in allowing um, uh, Europeans to get in touch with a real, the real history of this place yeah, from yeah. a native indigenous person's point of view. And this man was so generous and so interesting to look at. You wondered, yeah. where did he come from? Well, he came out of the woods. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was exciting. It was great that they did that. There's something here that hasn't been tapped into. And it, it doesn't have to be exploited. It doesn't have to be paved over. Um, it's just there's a there's a this would be the crown jewel for the University of Saskatchewan if they would realize that it's there. Yeah, I mean, how do you close down something that's been functioning for 77 years and enriching people's lives and then close it? I mean, it's hard to imagine that anyone would even consider such a, a move. And it's one of its, I mean, it's probably, it was the first of its kind in many ways in the world. They should be, they should be very proud of this place, actually, that it's been functioning so long. What, what lasts these days? Art is about life and the richness of life. Right. How could anyone question it? Yeah, and art is, it's, it's freedom of expression. As if they had been up here, the people thinking these things, they might understand that it has something to do with teaching the next generation about environmental issues, about caring, about paying attention, you know, about be falling in love with 
that which is not paved, right? Mm -hmm. That which is is uh, still still natural and hasn't been damaged. And boy, we know that that's a serious issue in the world today. We encourage um, people to come uh, to give their ideas, their suggestions. They can email keepkenderdine.com at keepkenderdine at gmail.com. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I mean, it'll take time, but we need to uh, not stop for a minute. <laughs>